Carter. Hello and welcome to the 2022-23 APTA Tour. We are live from Montclair Golf you. Club in Montclair, New Jersey, bringing you the inaugural Montclair Open, sponsored by the APTA membership, the APTA yeah, national sponsor, Paddle Pro, and local sponsors, BD, Core Private Wealth, Saturn Wireless LLC, and the Sam Joseph team, Luxury Real Estate Specialists. I'm Patty Hogan, along with Lauren Mandel, bringing you the women's final between number two seed Roxy Anika and Gabby Nicolescu versus Macy Elliott, Macy Elliott and Marcella Redesno. Lauren, can you introduce us to all the players out it, here today? I can. Good morning, Patty. Good morning. So, on this side of, of the, sc uh, the screen, we have um, on the ad side, Marcella Redesno, and on the do side, Macy Elliott, they were unseated in this tournament, and they've and they've created a huge upset by beating the top seeds and, and the players who were undefeated last year, Florentina Hanish and Anna Zabori. So that was a huge win for them. They followed it up with another big win over the number four seeds, Carrie Delmonico and Lauren Gebbia. There you see a close-up of uh, Marcella Redesno in the white paddle sweatshirt. Um, so they're having a great tournament. I, they're, they're not exactly, you know, newbies out here. They did win 2020 nationals, but um, so they are a top team in, in and of themselves. And they are playing uh, the number two seeds, Roxy Anika and Gabby Nicolescu, who we can't see right now. They're on the other side of the court. Um, there they are over there in the blue sweatshirt is Gabby Nicolescu. And her teammate in the ad side, Roxy Anika, and they've had an easier time in the draw. They they defeated uh, Karnas Andrekova in the quarterfinals. That was a good match in, straight, in two close sets, and then they had a, a pretty easy semifinal win over Gio and Williamson. And Patty, I am looking forward to a really good match here. I'm really excited for this one. Lauren, can you talk about some past matchups from last season? I believe there were three meetings between these there two There were, teams. And which is interesting because uh, Anika and Nicolescu didn't really play until the second half of the season. They only played four tournaments, and they met their today's opponents th in three out of four of those. So the Anika and Nicolescu won all three times. They won in straight sets in the quarters of Nationals and the semis of Boston. And they played in the quarterfinal reprieve of Short Hills, and that, that match they took in three sets. Um, but I think that Elliott and Redesno are looking more like their form of when they won 2020 Nationals, and I think today might be a different story. I think so, especially because the names are changing. Congrats to Macy getting married to Ryan. Next time we have a tournament, it's not going to be Elliott and Redesno. Lauren, congratulations to Macy. They had a remarkable run yesterday. Really incredible high-level paddle, and uh, I think this, this match, which is a uh, two out of three sets, regular scoring, I bet we're going to get a third set here today, Lauren. This is going to be a treat, the highest level in women's paddle. We know uh, Zabori um, and Flora Hanish got knocked out yesterday by Elliot and Redesno, and I, you just have the feeling in watching, I got to watch that match a little bit. Like you said, they're no strangers to the winner's circle, 2020 national champions in a convincing way. Mm -hmm. And they just never hit their stride the last two years, and they came out of the box highly motivated yesterday. You could just kind of feel it in them, and all of a sudden their level of play throughout yesterday afternoon just soared in front of our eyes. Yeah, I think it's a pretty common thing. I mean, I mean, Marcella Redesno had been around for a while, but when Macy Elliott, when they won nationals, that was really her first season out there and to f often when you have such quick success like that it's very hard to to, to stay at that oh, level I, and so yeah, i think it's wait, taken a little while for them to settle in and now they've sort of found their way back at the top where they belong and um this time there's more of a foundation under them for the match at what end yeah this is <laughs> and you guys are gonna, you I guys just think this is going to be fireworks okay. out here this morning, Lauren. There certainly will be. There's no shortage of firepower on this court. Uh, all four of these women can really uh, crack the ball, and they also all have terrific volleys and all-around games. And, you know, there's going to be – I don't think there's going to be a lot of easy points here. Shout out to the APTA Executive Director, Ann Sheedy. I'm sure she's watching from Pittsburgh. We miss her and wish her a full and speedy recovery. Uh, Ann's done a wonderful job for the organization of the American Flower Forum Tennis Association. 
over almost 15 years, Lauren, and uh, we hope she's on the mend. Yes, all our best wishes, Ann. Uh, um, I'm going to announce you in a moment, okay? And we're getting ready. Our umpire for today, Carol Everton, is going to introduce the players. Any moment. Carol's a member of Montclair Golf Club. Their incredible show of hospitality this weekend. The whole club has opened their doors up. Welcome the paddle community. Can't even tell you. We'll talk a little bit about the action Rock, yesterday. Deuce court? We'll listen to Carol give court? her intro. Are you playing Deuce Court? You are. Good. Okay. It's key for the umpire to know which side players are playing. And as the, um ready, I'm gonna. As the umpire, Carol is going to call the score, and she will uh, make a call if a player has asked her to, but the players are calling their own lines unless they uh, aren't sure there's a discrepancy, then, the, then Carol will make the call. Okay. And Carol will make the call. She's a decisive experienced umpire. She does a great job for the APTA. Okay. Morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the 2022 MGC Open Women's Finals. To my left in the deuce court will be Gabby Nicolescu. <laughs> to the right in the ad court, Roxy Anika. To my right, in the deuce court, Macy Medeiros. In the ad court, Marcella Redesno. Good luck, ladies. Nicolescu is going to start the match on the near side. Returning okay. serve, Macy Elliott. These lobs are going to be key. To, to beat Anika and Nikoleski, you have to hit high, deep lobs. Lauren, that's a great Five point. Five lobs. We talked about that a lot yesterday. And uh, Gio and uh, Williamson came up a little short in their semifinal against Anika and Nikoleski exactly for that reason. They just couldn't lob mm -hmm. high enough, place them well enough off the terrific spins that Anika and Nikoleski <laughs> hit on a constant basis. And they just they wear you down. and. Mm -hmm. People are like, oh, they should be able to lob higher. Well, it's harder said than done. It's not so easy. <laughs> I, 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 it's not five, so easy, especially five. when there's that relentless pressure coming at you. But I think, I think the team of Elliot and Redesno, particularly Redesno, who can bring it with the, you know, with the drives, but she is known for really tower high lobs. Thirty-five. Again, you see that serve of Gabby Nicolescu. It doesn't look like it's it's much, but she she gets behind the ball and gets it deep and low, and it's not as easy to attack as you might think. And she closes the net so well for that first volley. Thirty all. See, Elliot handled that uh, big roller comfortably there. You know, yesterday's semi, Gu and Williamson just struggled to handle the spins in the mm -hmm. overheads where you can see right away here. You know, it's it's early, obviously, but the serving is going to be key, especially for Nicolescu, who leads this, starts this team off. Um, you know, holding serve is not going to be <laughs> anywhere the same today. I would expect there's going to be a lot of breaks today on serve. All four of these players returned so well. Yeah, and they just can play the screens forever. They can mm -hmm. dictate 
uh, with their lobbing, with their height and their placement, and can slow down the tempo of play. So, you know, yesterday we saw a lot of the crazy overhead spins <laughs> from the Nicolescu and Anika. And I just think the depth of these lobs right here in the beginning, mm -hmm. you just don't see that comfort zone right now. I mean, it's so early, but I just think they have a game plan, Redesno and Elliot, big time here. Look at that lob up the line. We know Jerry loves yeah. that lob. And look what she got. She got the weak reply. She game. pulled Nick Lesky Medeiros back. For and Desno. Medeiros for Desno leads the first set. One game to love. That's the way to play them if you can if you can do it. It's easier said than done, but they just did it. And if they can keep that up, that'll be a winning strategy for them. And I think that's a great thing for everybody watching at home. You know, how do you how do you create the open court for yourselves? And that lob up that line really creates an awkward position, you know, from either side. But I think it, with Gabby, you, you have perfect. to get her mm -hmm. moving okay. to her left versus moving to her right as she's about to swing on her overhead. Redesno yep. to serve. Her overhead flattens out a ton. She doesn't hit a lot of spin from that position. Lauren, this is the first stop in the APTA Tour. Next up, Medina out in Chicago, followed by Philly Cricket, then Charities. A lot of good paddles start off the year, season. No. Detroit will host Five love. a Grand Prix this year, Lauren, which I think is exciting, out um, in Michigan on December 10th and 11th. Then we go Midwesterns, back to Boston, Birchwood, Short Hills, Philly, the Bourbon Ball, and the season caps off with Nationals March 9th through 12th out in Chicago. Five, five. Good drive by Anika. Got her opponents off the net there. I thought in the early going it was key for uh, Elliot and Redesno to get off to a solid start because you look at it in the three matches from last year and Cruz and, uh, not Cruz, Liz Cruz. Yeah. <laughs> 35. Nicolescu and Anika would be favorites, sort of, if you looked at it from that point of view. Number two in the country versus number six. But when you're a former national champ, these guys know what it takes to win and they're super deliberate in their play. Yeah, they and they look. the pace of play. It almost becomes a pick em. They look very comfortable, uh, Elliot and Redes know. They look like they know what they want to do and how they want to play. And, they, and so far, whoop, so far they're executing. Yeah, yesterday uh, I watched the a lot of the Demonico Gebbia match and just a high level paddle match that Elena Redesno pulled out there and thought Elliot was feeling it, off. Yeah. was feeling it just played remarkable. Marcella we've come to know just she's when she's incredibly steady, yeah, they are tough to beat. And in that point you saw that all their lobs pulled uh, Cruz and Nicolescu out of the service box. And that's where you want them hitting their overheads. You don't want them all. hitting those rollers and those spins inside the service box. So that's what correct. they got to do. Sorry. Yeah, yes, correct. 45. My God. No. 40 30. Shout out to Mike Cochran enjoying the action from Martha's Vineyard. You know, we talked about lobbing styles. Anika releases and does that one-handed, just gets, you know, amazing height on her lobs, Lauren. And where, like, Jessica Gio, two-handed follow-through. Same thing with R Redesno. Mm -hmm. I would just say at this point, it's a strength of Redesno in her game. She's got every strength, though, Lauren. <laughs> Game, Redesno, the first set stands 1-1. One, one. I think you got me saying Cruz oh Nicolescu also. Guys, I'm really sorry. The name changed. The married name. 
and, <laughs> and we're not even trying to call Macy Elliott by her married yes, name. <laughs> You know, it's the first tournament of the year. You talk about who's the pressure's on here. The pressure's on. Love Nicolescu five. Nicolescu and Anika in this match. I mean, Macy and Marcella are coming in here a little under the radar. You know, questionable results from the last two seasons. Not a ton of play successfully together, you know, up to the level that they would expect. And I just feel like they're playing so loosely. Well, they just look confident and sharp to me. I think they've made a single error so far. And that lob's too short, obviously. But and I thought yesterday, um, Ellen and Redesno played the big points really well against Kerry and Lauren. Just, you know, the match was so close, could have gone either way. No. But I just thought at the moment of truth, they delivered. 5-5! Five, five. We've got South Carolina represented Jim McCready. Pace of play, all oh, Redesno Elliott here. You see what happens when the 35. lobs get shorter. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like you're just trying to survive. Yeah, you've practiced against that Gabby overhead. That is <laughs> no, <laughs> no, that's fun. no fun. It's just not. Roxy and Gabby briefly 45. today. 45. Roxy said that Gabby let her hit some overhead yesterday. She didn't force the change. We're right there early on. You just saw Gabby saying, I'm moving to the left of the two of us. Yeah, they didn't switch yesterday, or at least not in the quarterfinal match. Well, I thought one of the differences in, them, in their win yesterday over Gio Williamson was the fact that Roxy was the player to the left as we see the team here. Gabby is the player to the left. And Roxy is just an unbelievable low volley. And she just, like Gia Oops. Williamson hit 40, 30. some big time shots at big moments. And the volley ability of Anika just totally negated, you know, any positive outcome from those drives. Talked about that sidearm serve yesterday, that real high point of contact. I thought she served great yesterday, and then she told me she missed four serves in a row in one game in, in the next match, yes. which I, I saw nothing of. But um, you know, she didn't miss a single serve in in her quarter in their quarterfinal win, and that's a, a, a huge uh, bonus for Anika Nicolescu if if Anika's dialed in with that sidearm serve. Now that, yeah, that's just chasing, chasing there. Advantage, Anika. I think as we get more into this match, one of the real keys is going to be Anika's forehand. She missed a lot of forehands yesterday. She has a great forehand, but uh, she doesn't seem to be hitting it as well as, as she can. And whoop. Had some movement issues last year with her knee. Um, I thought she felt really loose and, uh, you know, on it yesterday. But to your point, when Nicolescu switched over on a couple of key points from that half court, I thought she's much more in the face of her opponents and, you know, hits the ball in a l much sooner, taking a little time, you know, reaction time away from the net team to cover the drive. I just think that's the difference that she brings from that ad court. Yeah, and, and Anika just made some forehand errors. She's made a few already today, so I, I'm going to keep a close eye on that. I got it. And, you know, we 
come to see with Nicolescu over the years. If she goes a little bit on a drought, which rarely happens on her forehand, she do it doesn't matter. It does not impact her, it seems. Where most players, <laughs> it does kind of shake your confidence slightly. That is very true. Better lobs. Too short one, yeah. watch out. But there's another good deep one, and Desna followed it up with a drive. Great cover there. <laughs> They're great That's athletic some get. Tremendous defense in this point from Elliot and Redesno. There it is, that, that down the line lob pulls Nicolescu back, and she got some help from the left court there, but that's the, that's the one she's looking for. What a point. I think as the game has become a power game over the years, Lauren, that we lose sight of the effectiveness of the lobbing, particularly in the women's game, in my opinion, because it definitely can open up the court for the baseline team and just give you that forward look on your next shot. Well, you have to in a, in a match like this where everyone volleys so well. How are you going to win a point if you're just driving? You're, you're, you're not. You have to get the net team out of position by lobbing well. Anika, first set stands, Medeiros, two, Anika, one. Tremendous hold from Roxy Anika. And Anika is playing doubles with Gabby Nicolescu. <laughs> Carol was saving that. <laughs> Shout out to Ann Waldron, all of the APTA, all the volunteers are doing an incredible job pulling off this event. And the volunteers from Montclair, Lauren, Unbelievable. One more shout out to Allison Sloan, Patty Topping, Jenny Summers, Carol Overton, and every other uh, volunteer. Madeira's to serve. We talked about the staff just making this a first rate event in the inaugural Montclair Open. They couldn't do more for <laughs> every single person. Allison must have asked me 25 times yesterday if I needed anything. Yeah. I haven't had someone ask me 25 times in 25 years. <laughs> They're super organized, and it's been a pleasure. Great move. <laughs> oh my lord, what hands. <laughs> That was, I think, a smart play by Elliot. She stayed back after that good lob and waited to come back in. You know, this is one of the things, the ability of Redesno and Elliot to play defense. I mean, they are equipped to offset the offensive weapons that Nicolescu and Anika deliver from the baseline. And there's that Until forehand. That there's Girl, that point. You know five. what? If that's that is a key shot. If Anika can pull that shot off on a regular basis today, they're going to be tough to beat. Yep, and she spotted that ball right through the middle, a little off the right hip, perfect spot. And I think that's a great way for Anika to get her confidence. Just pick the mm -hmm. lowest part of the net, high percentage drive for her, and then hit it over and over and over. Love 30. Loose error. We won't see too many of those. I don't think Macy miss, missed one yesterday. 
the whole day. <laughs> Low 40. That's a tough volley to handle. I'll tell you, Nick Alaska's return of serve out of that deuce court. One of the best I've ever seen in the women's game. It's kind of, you know, she just spots it and brings, hits such a heavy ball. And to have to face that every time you're serving to start the game. 5.40. It's a huge advantage of, of her playing the ad court. And obviously, both players, Anika and Nicolescu, can play either court. Yep. And they do often uh, switch around, or they have in the past. Game, Anika Nicolescu, first set stance, two games all. So there we have it. I thought that there would be a decent amount of breaks on serve, serve today. Just just because of the high level of both teams and what they can bring from the deck. Anika loves this formation because yesterday long. She just dominated the game pre-COVID with her overheads. Love five. And her volley is just sick. Off the net, <laughs> incredible low volleyer. Three-time mixed national champs. Played against the best guys in the country and can handle it. Mm -hmm. Love 30. They both love controlling play with Nicolescu and Anika. Both of them are <laughs> your A players who you know, want to be kind of in charge. So it's going to be yeah. fascinating as they go through the season to see, you know, actually, do they need a captain? It might not matter. I think they're they're blending and it's kind of effortless. Like yesterday looked great. And, you know, they took steps toward, you know, from the second half of last season, losing only to you know, Flora and Anna's unbelievable season. And it looks like they picked up and are highly motivated from that loss. There's an example of that, of that. It's tough to get into a quick volley exchange with Rocky and Nika and come out on top. Well placed, well placed return. Lobs get short. The chase begins. It's tough to get out of it once you start. But you can see Redesno has the discipline to throw up a lob and not kind of get suckered into mm -hmm. the drive when Anika and Nicolescu are on top of the net to defend the drive right at that moment. Deuce! the right lob she's she's uh macy elliott has executed it well so far just missed that one by a little yeah nicolescu i brought a little more heat to that ball yeah. and you could just see elliott will make an adjustment to that
great shot of the beautiful facilities here. You see those pickleball courts over to our left in this picture, Lauren. Montclair's major upgrade to their facilities in the last five years. Spectacular uh, job that they have pulled off here. Just, you know, a perfect venue for an event like this and many other events. Add in! They were the height. They they were the host of nationals, Lauren, way back before. You probably were in diapers still in '81. <laughs> no, they, they ran a couple nationals, and the event was on the men's side, won by Montclair Golf Club members Dave Muller and Bruce Kelsey. Hmm? I think Artie Williams and uh, Pete Groomberg were in there. Come back. Site of some mixed nationals events as well, for, run by Charlie Stevens, a trillion years ago. Play. Another Game big, big hold. First set stands, three games to two. Nicolesco, Anika, three games. Desno, Madeiras, two. And I would like to bring you a word from our APTA sponsor, Paddle Pro. For over 20 years, Paddle Pro has been recognized as an industry leader in platform tennis. The knowledge, expert advice, vast inventory, and ultimate customer service will help any player find the perfect equipment to take your game to the next level. Paddle Pro is the only website to carry all platform tennis brands. For more information, go to www.paddlepro.com. They're my number one source for everything I need, racket sports related, especially that other sport called pickleball, padel, tennis, platform tennis, they've got it all. Pop tennis. Pop tennis. I've even gotten ping pong paddles from Paddle Pro. The Desno to serve. So, Anika and Nic Nicolescu, three games in a row here. I have a kind of uh, adjusted and are all, I, I would say both teams are feeling pretty comfortable here. Yeah, it doesn't, f Five I mean, they, they, they've won three games in a row, but it's not like they, you know, just ran away with them. It's been three super close games. It could have gone either way. There's a great shot of Watch the facilities five. here at Montclair. Uh, not only did they host all those national events, they've also had long-running New Jersey States, played in that event a million times here. They they pull it off. This is such a community paddle community here. And like I said, they have hit it out of the park this weekend with hosting this inaugural event. Thanks, Montclair. Lauren, we've got a great side court quarterfinal reprieve being played between Anna Zabori and Flora Hanish and Amy Shea and Jolene Sutter and Hanish and uh, Zabori are up 4-3 in the first set. Yeah, that could be a final also. Ugh, and they're on beaten streak going back to nationals two years ago. Stopped yesterday by the incredible play of Missy Elliott and Marcella Redesno. Uh, excuse me. Game. 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 That was not a good game from Elliot Anika Redesno. To Anika to serve. That was a weird game from Elliot and Redesno. Let's start calling her Medeiros and see okay, if that changes. Okay, let's try. Okay, let's okay. go Medeiros and Redesno from here on in. It's going to take a little adjusting. Five love. We'll be patient with each other. <laughs> For sure. Roxy's smiling. She's feeling good. Everything's working. Now you feel their, their high energy right there. You know, their little bounce, a little bounce into her step, and that's what we see with Roxy. All four women are teaching pros, Lauren. Do you, uh, where do they work, Lauren? Yeah, we um, mentioned this earlier, but Roxy Anika is at the, she's the new director at the Field Club of New Canaan. Gabby Nicolescu is at the Patterson Club. Macy Elliott is at the Country Club of Darien, where she won her national title. And Marcella Redesno is at Easton Racquet Club. I just wanted to talk about that because we thank all of those clubs for allowing their, their pros, who are just some of the greatest players our sport has ever seen, come out and spend some time away in the club, from the club on weekends. And, you know, it's, it's, 
I think it's what's helping raise the level of the game. The sport has so changed, and, and we thank all those clubs for hiring these great women directors and, um, you know, really supporting the, their participation on the APTA tour. Absolutely. Five thirty. Correct. Correct. Five thirty. I that think Gabby it. thinks it was in there. <laughs> yes. But uh, the umpire is mm -hmm. yeah. not agreeing yeah. with her. Yeah, it's okay. 540. Carol is certain, never misses yeah. a call. So, yeah, no hesitation there. And I say never. I've never seen her miss a call. Mm. She's decisive. It's her Rutgers background. Hi. 30. 40. Yeah, a few of those lobs that were going in earlier are missing by a little, and it's taking the wind out of the sails of uh, Medeiros and Redesno. Yeah, Medeiros is, uh, you know, was such a key yesterday in pulling out that win over Delmonico Gebbia. Um, and I think they're effectively <laughs> taking away a lot of her uh, skills here. They're, you know, Redesno's been the recipient of a, a, a chunk of the balls, and they're picking and choosing when they go at Macy. So it'll be interesting to see what adjustments Macy will make out here. I mean, she's getting her looks, but I don't see that she's able to create enough. Uh, they don't have any easy offense coming, I would say, right now. Desnard, just a <laughs> human backboard over there in that uh, court. Yeah, these are not easy balls either. You see she's getting so low to pick them up. <laughs> Great adjustment on that ball from Adairs. That's good. There was such pressure in the faces for <laughs> Maderas and Redesna, and they just handled it. They can negate that first crushing shot that Anika and Nicolescu deliver. Here comes another blitz. Oh. Advantage A. Shout out to everybody up in uh, Wilton, Connecticut, especially Ta Lisa, who's enjoying the live stream action. I saw Ta Lisa in a paddle camp, and I named her Ta Lisa. <laughs> and I don't call everybody tall someone. I, you know, I, <laughs> there I were was going to ask. I was going to ask. <laughs>
we've had an update not only on Maisie Elliott's name, which is Medeiros, but her club. She is the director of rackets at the golf club of Avon. Game Anika. We had old intel on our yeah. We apologize. First well, set, Anika Nicolescu five, Redesno Medeiros two. That's five games in a row, and I think that you know the relentless pressure is just even though look, even though even though Medeiros and Redesno can handle it and they're making making the points longer, the relentless pressure is just wearing them down, and it's hard to keep those lobs where they need to be. And uh, you know, all credit to to Anika and Nicolescu who are executing well and not making errors. Um, and when they're not making errors, they're tough to beat. Really tough to beat. Yeah, one of the questions we had coming on the air was if the effects of the wins that Elliot and Redesno had yesterday, you know, that they worked hard to get through to the final today, much harder than you, you said it to, from uh, much harder than Anika and Nicolescu. And, you know, they went 6 1 7 6 in their um, first match against Cran and Herschel. Then they took out the amazing <laughs> team of Hanish and Zabori, 7 5 6 2. That and was a mental effort, physical effort. And then they, you know, were here late last night taking out Delmonico Gebbia. So. Which was tremendous. You know, they could have had a letdown. They're the only team that's beaten Hanish and Zabori in over a year. And, you know, they could have had a letdown against a very tough Delmonico Gebbia team, but they didn't. Um, and, you know, I don't think they looked like they, they had a letdown when they came out here today. They're just getting outplayed right now. They, they, you know, and, and the, the dip up. will come. I think the dip in level will come from um, Anika Nicolescu and uh, Medeiros and Redesno are playing well enough that if they just keep themselves in it, they can take advantage of that and get back into this match. But five if the dip doesn't five. come, it's going to be tough because uh, there's just so much pressure coming from Anika Nicolescu and so many great drives and overheads. 35. Well, again, I, we spoke of it yesterday briefly about how uh, Gabby and Roxy are great front runners. And when they get out in the lead, you know, it will force, all. it could possibly force a team to change what their comfort zone is to try to combat it. But, you know, they're, they've lost five games in a row here. <laughs> and they're going to have to do something a little bit different. I mean, 30, 40. I thought that they controlled the tempo at the very beginning. Yeah. But I think, I think, you know, we talked about the pressure, and I just feel like after those first three or four games went by, Nicolescu and Anika That's totally got a little bouncier, and the pressure was gone. And you saw Madera stay back there. I was about to say, you know, she's lost her last two service games very quickly and, and has had to come up with some really hard first volleys that she hasn't been able to handle. This is probably a good idea to change the look and at least get in the point here. Game, Anika Nicolescu. Anika Nicolescu in the first set, six games to two. Yes, we will, right now. Okay, Patty, you're their coach. You're the coach of uh, Madeiros for Desno. What are you telling them? I think go back, start the match again. Forget that set happened. They got off to a great start, went up 2-0, um, and it was because of the lobbing and their ability, you know, they did I always think in women's play, you have to go back to how do you set yourselves up? Um, and I think, I think they've got to Even figure game. out a Six little bit more lobbing placement mm -hmm. variety here because I'd love to get, no you know, I just think the setup yeah, that Anika and again? Nicolescu have, sure. they can defend the net from every position here. So I do think it's going to be the up the line lobbing, but I also think they have to bring the cross court and just keep them a little bit more honest maybe show a blitz, maybe throw out something a little bit different. But I think it's the energy. And I think sometimes when you've had a long day and so emotional, mentally, physical and yesterday, deserve. it does take that first set to get your sea leg. So I would expect that um, Adaris and Redesno, you know, right now, now it's like, okay, we were tired, but it's two sets to go. We, we knew we had to win two sets to pull out this match anyway. Let's just start right now. So I would expect total positive ad attitude about it.
Shout out to Five Mark, Love. Mark Innes really taking the game and the promotion of our game and being able to uh, take advantage of social media and beautiful production company here on the stream here from Montclair. We hope Mark has a speedy recovery. Running the show from, from at home. Not everyone can do that, Lauren. That's talent. Okay, let's watch these lobs here. See, this is where I'd love to see Redesno just sneak in a little bit. She's tried a few times. It hasn't really right, gotten she, anywhere she with it. Right, she a flyer on a forehand yeah. on the ball right into her body, but I'm just saying kind of like apply a little pressure just almost visibly <laughs> to and, you know, change up just so that when Nicholas is about love. to hit her overhead or Anika, there's some movement, just yeah. something to kind of change what they're looking at. 40, love. Yeah, see, in the first set, you know, the first five games, they were all battles. Now, now you see a few easier games for Cruz and Nicolescu, which is, I, gosh, Jane, Anika, Anika Nicolescu, which is, Anika Nicolescu you know. lead the second set, one, love. So the time is now. They're, the time is they're now. They're going to have to do something right now um, just because of the ability of Anika and Nicolescu just to steamroll when they get on a roll and their confidence is yeah. high. Trouble. Almost unstoppable. <laughs> they're trouble to begin with, but when they're confident. Yeah, I like this. A little energy and Desno Elliott are... Uh, Desno to serve. Medeiros are on the same page, and they're always united as a team, and that's what you love to see out here. That gives us the belief that they can figure this out. I just think psychologically starting every service game and looking up and seeing Nicolescu's forehand about to be rifled at you is daunting. And, five. and they're losing the net, you know? I mean, you don't want to, they can't afford to lose the net because Nicolescu and Anika are just controlling play so dominantly from there. Love 30. We have a little coaching advice okay. from Drew Broderick. Okay. Who says that Macy and Marcella need to hit more neutral drives off the screen to get Gabby and Roxy back on the net, and then their lobs will create offense. Okay, let's see what happens. I just don't know that they're getting enough clean looks on this off of the screens. Love 40. Kate and Nikki from Chatham Fishing Game, one of the local clubs, enjoying watching the action. 540. One of the very, very few rare forehand misses from Roxy and Nika today. They believe in Macy and Marcella. They think they're going to come back in this match, Lauren. Well, they certainly can. Watching courtside, catching the action live, Lauren. I'm not sure. The crowd will uh, fill up here this afternoon after this match a little bit um, with host pro Micker Doya, Sven Burris up against Johan Durant, Stephen Mitchell. It's going to be an incredible, 30, 40, incredible match.
One more shout out to former Montclair Pro, Jim McCready. Says that Leslie Gamby is now in the Charleston area and looking forward to the launch of their paddle season down there. Thirty forty. Just a great move. Game, Anika Nikolescu. They lead the second set, two games to love. How many games in a row, Lauren? You're really good at math here. <laughs> All of them. Nikolescu to serve. Yeah. <laughs> One so six plus two, Patty. <laughs> Still eight. You know, and the thing with Nikolescu, Anika, they're giving away nothing. No. Very few unforced errors. This just is so daunting for Madeiras and Redesno at this point, given that this is the first turn of the year. Everybody's got to get their sea legs, and they worked so hard yesterday. I think, you know, when you get into a couple of events in the season, everyone's used to the back-to-back -back days, you know, a day full of paddle, where it's just early to be in paddle shape, at, you know, during the first term of the year. And if you've planned a wedding and gotten married. Wow. <laughs> That was like pulling a rabbit out of a hat. Five, that point. love. I love five, love five. But I love that, and I love Medeiros' instincts in that situation, capitalized. You know, and I think that's what, when this tournament started, Lauren, and I looked at the draw with the eight top teams ranking in the country here, I thought five teams had a legitimate shot to win this. And one of my teams that I thought could win it was Medeiros and Redesna. It goes without saying that Anika and Nikolescu were on that list. Okay. Five, five. Again, just a little long on that lob again, trying to go up the line. It's a tough lob to have to make off that cutting overhead. And, you know, they won the point before with some Houdini action, but it's tough to, tough to win your points like that. Thirty-five. Right, and now they're pressing a little bit. And you could just hit a good deep reset shot and Redesno went for too much. Yep, and I think to Drew Broderick's point about trying to throw in some off-speed drives, because you've got to keep that net team honest and mm -hmm. on top of the net. Mm -hmm. and if you're becoming way too predictable and lobbing every ball, as we can see that, you know, Anika and Nicolescu are not phased by the lobbing at this point in the match. Mm -hmm. So right there, a little bit even less speed on that just to pull Anika in a little bit more. Whoop. 30 all. Lauren, yesterday, how many people out here? Several hundred people enjoying the action. And as the, uh, you know, when, you once you took off, you know, that the party out in the air was a first rate cocktail party. Really fun. Someone was wondering if they're serving bloodies. I'm sure they are <laughs> serving Bloody Mary somewhere. Not in here. No, yes. not for us. relentless and eventually you're going to miss one. I remember 
remember watching Dardis and Shea try to defend that years ago, and they did an outstanding job. I thought Dardis made a huge adjustment where the moment Gabby was about to hit the ball, Dardis would just head for just the run. side screen. And I wonder if well, Madaris can't make Nicolescu, a move over. Nicolescu and Ika lead the second set, three games to love. You know, and just, again, change what Gabby's looking at because I, I just feel like they're, Gabby's just totally zoned in, as is Anika right now, and um, something's got to – they're going to have to pull a you know a rabbit out of the bag here big time to turn this around. Anika and Nicolescu just crushing it. Um, real fast, the uh, we had six events go on this weekend. Not only did you see the elite men and women on our gameplay, but we had men's PTI 25 plus. We had a men's open. We had a Madeira women's PTI served. 40 plus. We had a women's TI, uh, PTI of 60 plus. Six events, 55 ladies teams and 53 men's teams participated this weekend. Something for everyone Phew. on the APTA tour. That was exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what adjustments that. Uh, yeah, and kudos to tournament director Mick Doyer on not only <laughs> reaching the finals, but running this tournament, which is another daunting task. See what adjustments Medeiros makes on her serve now. She had two service games that have gone quickly the other way. And you see Nicolescu back over in that ad court, very happy, just looking to pounce. There you go. That's pounce. the difference in what we're <laughs> the pressure that she applies where Redesno plays much deeper in that ad court corner. Yeah, you just see the roller, the slice, <laughs> every so much variety in their overhead selection. It's great when you have option A, B, C, and D. Yeah, and once they get it to the point rolling, you know, with the, with <laughs> rolling, with the rollers and the slice overheads and whatever, it's hard for, uh, it's hard for the other team to, to, to hit a drive. I mean, they're kind of stuck hitting these right. defensive lobs and they can't get anywhere. Maybe they just go drive, drive, drive and just try to, you know, to Drew's point, pull him on top of the net just off of the deck. But they're just not, you know, the depth of Anika and Nicolescu's shots are just not creating any yeah. easy offensive opportunities. Right, I mean, there's no driving Madaris here. And Redesna. None, <laughs> none. <laughs> no, I mean, I, Where I yesterday the Gebbia and Monaco match, totally different yeah. type of match. Big serve. Wow, beautifully handled by Redesna coming, hitting a little one, you know, off-speed one-hander out of that corner. Nice lob there that got Nicolescu back. Gabby Nicolescu in the deuce court, far side. Roxy Anika in the ad court, far side. Macy Medeiros, left side of the Gabby! net. And that's Marcella Redesna who just let that ball fly by. Five ball. Medeiros and Redesna need a few bad errors like that for the other team to get themselves back in here. You, know, you might get those errors from Roxy versus from Gabby, but Roxy's play has just hit another level this yep. weekend, and she's she's not giving up anything. And we talked about how she's a player who, you know, when she's confident, watch out. 540. And if I looked over and my partner was Nicolescu, I'd be confident. <laughs> Game, Anika Nicolescu. And you know, she tried Anika something Nicolescu different. She tried the, the, the big serve. Um, 
it's just, you know, look, they're searching for answers and uh, good for Medeiros and Redesno for trying some different things. But so far, uh, Nick Lesko and Nika have all the answers. Love five. One. Yeah. Roxy's looking around like, Gabby, wait, you are human. Love 30. Little relief there from Medeiros and Redesna that she actually missed a short on a short lob. Here, believe it or not. <laughs> Hit the ball out oh. in frustration. Thank you. Um, All right. Anika serving left 30. There's the pressure. Good move from Redesno. And here's triple break point. First opportunity. <laughs> that Medeiros and Redesno have had in a while. Since yesterday. <laughs> well, <laughs> they did win the first two Five games. Yeah. 40. No, I got to watch so much of their action yesterday and they're just outstanding. Just tough to come back to back. And be at that level of play against the team with such weapons as Anika Nicolescu. Lauren, you've watched so many of these matches. Sometimes it's just one point or just a sequence of shots mm -hmm. where everything can change. Even even in this deep a hole. Mm -hmm. Poles against some teams when you're in a deep hole <laughs> against Anika Nikolescu. Almost impossible to dig this far out. I don't know. Not without not a little help from them. Yeah. Just not feeling like they're generous this morning. No. They're giving no, they're giving away. nothing away. Medeiros, Redesno, second set stands. Nicolesco and Ika, four games. Medeiros, Redesno, one. That was a really deep lob. In fact, I thought it might have gone deep in the court. And Nicolescu was way back and off balance. I, I thought she played an out ball, actually. But she, there's no ball that Nicolescu doesn't want to hit. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she'd like to leave the out ones to go. But, um, okay, that was a start for Elliot and Desno. Let's see, Desno if, let's see if they can build on it. Sure, three good drives from Anika Nicolescu. They fed off each other and 
Just found that spot off the right hip. Ow, ow. Yeah. Wow, great cover. Yeah. What anticipation from Anika knowing exactly where to go when she saw Gabby Five make the move. All. You have a really nice volley behind Nicolescu. That's the danger of the blitz. But teamwork, Anika knew she was going. Love the coverage. something mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's you know it's funny kind of with Nicolescu like making the move here putting herself at a little, little bit of risk in terms of if they volley behind her and 30 all oh. that's how much confidence they have in each other that they can they can handle any of those situations and that's how they play you know they they like the high risk high reward paddle with good reason Chase is on. And 30, Nicolescu 40. just fired that return of serve th through the middle. Redesna runs back, tracks it down, throws up a lob. Boom, gets caught. Maybe one foot out of position on the baseline. Can't track that ball down. Nicolescu uh, knew exactly where to put that ball. Placement over overheads. Besides the power and the spin, placement is huge. Missed return. Keeps some Darius and Redesno in this game. Just, <laughs> I oh mean, Redesno <laughs> saw it coming uh, like we all no. did. She knew how it was going to bounce. She knew where to go, and she still couldn't get it. Just a great backhand slash volley. I don't think I've ever seen it hit like that and just die on that side screen. Anika was testing the waters with that shot yesterday. Hit a couple that didn't quite work out so well, but right there, beautifully executed. Okay. Game, Nicolescu, Anika. Nicolescu, Anika lead the second set five games to one. Okay, that hole is getting really deep, Lauren. <laughs> They're gonna need at least a step ladder. <laughs> Nicolescu to serve. To, to get out of this one. Just relentless pressure from Anika and Nicolescu. Anika tried to cut off Love that volley five. there. Missed one. Again, how many unforced errors in this match from Nicolescu? Anika, total. I don't know, five? <laughs> Just remarkable consistency. Five, five. And you know when Nicolescu's hand slapping, <laughs> Anika has to watch out, brace her wrist there. The uh, quarter Three, reprieve five. champion is uh, Hanush and Zubori. They won 6-4, 6-2 against Shea and Sutter.
good sequence right there. Got Nicolescu hitting the awkward ball. Nicolescu covered beautifully on the low shot from Madeira's out of that two score. What a lob right there. See, I would love to see pressure from right. even Redesno on that play. Kind of seeing it. You just can't let your opponent hit an overhead from right on top of the baseline and not take that, not think about taking that ball out of the air. Especially when you're in a huge hole. Down six, two, five, one. 45. Brings us to double match point. Nico was ready to end it right there. <laughs> I mean, when a D makes fewer than 10 forced, unforced errors. Well, it, I made up that phenomenal. number. We don't know if no, it's I actually believed true. You. I believed you, Lauren. <laughs> I believe everything you said. <laughs> yeah, that looked wide. <laughs> has pretty much been the story of the match. Just relentless pressure at the net and Medeiros and Redesno haven't been able to stop it, counter it, or take the net away. Yeah, we never saw a switch of position thus far. And trying to just present something different to what Anika and Nicolescu are looking at. And you just feel like it's a matter of time in these points. Real discipline play from Aniko on her overheads here. There's a player to the right, really picking some spots, yeah. doing a great job. Okay, well, that was a. Yes. A good job, good handle by Medeiros. Saving the second match point. Hey there, causing Nicolescu and Anika to have an extended conversation. Maybe one of the longest they've ever had on the court. <laughs> A wayward toss, good, well, well left. repeat over and over and over here. Third match point.
watch out. <laughs> There you have it, Lauren. Just an awesome display there by Nicolescu our and number Anita two seed. in the second set, six games to one. Patty, you gonna go interview our winners now? I'm gonna go outside, Lauren. That was okay. That was that was incredible to watch. What a great inaugural event here at Montclair, and we'll talk soon, Lauren. Okay. Final match Patty's score. gone out to uh, interview the winners, and I have with me now Mark Fischel. Good morning, Lauren. How are you? Uh, good morning. How are you? What did you think of the match, Thank Mark? You. Amazing ladies. Just constant you. pressure mm -hmm. from Nicolescu and Anika. They just, no answers. They had the net the entire mm -hmm. match. I mean, uh, if you had some stats on it, I imagine they were the net 80, 85% of uh, the time. Every point was, I mean, and they must have hit 10,000 rollers. I mean, every point they, they hit, I mean, look. Medeiros and Redesno did a good job of deflecting, but it was just like a dripping tap eventually. Uh, I don't care. Just lean it up against me. Yeah, they just, just couldn't generate enough <laughs> offense. The, the irony is they lobbed pretty well. Yeah. And they oh, still okay. got rolled. So, I mean, my big question is, can exactly. Elliott Redesno get in May with those I? top two teams? Got that. There's a pencil. Don't Do they have yourself. enough offense from the backcourt? Because you see they're when they neutralize they Macy's backhand, there. there's not a lot of other answers they've got. Yeah, she really, her drives weren't a factor at all today. I mean, there were, there were almost awesome. no drives. Was I okay? Could you hear me? Yeah, but clearly that was their strategy, but mm -hmm. then there's got to be a second part of the strategy. Okay. But to oh, uh, Anika and Nicolescu's credit, they played an almost flawless match. Yeah. Yeah, well, their overheads are just so good. They put so much pressure yeah. when they're at the net, which is something that's really absent from the Elliott Redesno game. This is such a gorgeous setup here at Montclair. Mick Erdoy and his team did, did such a wonderful job. It was just a great event, one of the best non-nationals I think I ever attended. Yeah, super well run, and, and the fans are enjoying it. We had some great play for the first tournament of the season. And almost as importantly, the food trucks were delicious last <laughs> night, Lauren. I know you were out of here and missed those. But I, I missed that. They were pretty good. So you weren't listening at all. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so we're still waiting for Patty Hogan to, to be with our winners. How do you see the season unfolding, Lauren? I mean, obviously you have these two teams at the top who played in the finals of Nationals last year. Do you think anybody else is capable of getting into that group? Uh, look, I think, I think that we saw one of them lose, right? We saw Rodesno and, and uh, Medeiros take out Pahanish and Zibori, and I think that, you know, there are a lot of good teams at the top, and, and if you're not on the top of your game, then um, they can lose. But clearly those two teams are the favorites. I mean, if you're sitting here today, I would be shocked to see somebody other than those two teams in the finals of Nationals. I remember last year going into Nationals on Long Island, the feeling, I mean, I just felt like there was nobody else who could really compete with those two teams. And I haven't been convinced differently yet. I mean, obviously a big win. Okay, I think we're going to throw it down to Patty Hogan now for an interview. And we're back live from Montclair Golf Club in beautiful West Orange, New Jersey. And I am with the winners of the Montclair Open. Incredible display put on here by Roxy Anika, Gabby Nicolescu to win the inaugural event here. Kudos to our tournament directors. Just a phenomenal job. Roxy, you were freaking amazing this morning. <laughs> uh, I don't know about freaking amazing, but I felt good. Um, I would like to thank uh, Montclair Club for hosting such a beautiful tournament. Allison, thank you so much for all your effort. And Mick, thank you for organizing such an amazing event. Uh, very excited to be back this season playing with Gabby. 
Um, I want to thank New Canaan Field Club for <laughs> being so supportive and showing so much love and even being here with me today and yesterday. Thank you guys. How are you guys? What would you like to share? What was the secret today, Gabby? You guys, you guys were amazing. Oh, you know, I really want to, I think the secret was Roxy, so thank you, partner, for playing with me. Um, I think we're starting to play better and better, and it's fun to start another season together. Uh, thank you, Patterson, my club, for um, allowing me to be here, uh, the team at home that is covering my hours today, so thank you so much. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, organizer, um, the APTA Tour, for doing such a good job. Uh, we appreciate all the um, prize money coming in the tournaments, makes it more exciting, allows us to come out more and uh, compete without, um, you know, co costing us too much money, so that's good. Uh, thank you, my husband, who is watching the kids. Couldn't do it without him. Hope you can keep watching them. Thank you, uh, Thank you. <laughs> Congrats, that's you guys. Amazing you. start to the 2022 season. Thank you. Here's Tiernan Cavana from the APTA. Fantastic. Um, on behalf of the APTA, um, I want to say thank you to the amazing tournament directors, Mick Rodoya and Allison Sloan. They have done a fantastic job today. The first stop of the APTA tour has been amazing. I want to thank Carol Everson for being a fantastic yeah, umpire Carol. up there. Jackie Cameron, all the APTA and the APTA staff. Um, I know that Mick and Allison could not have run this tournament without the help of some amazing local sponsors. So I want to make sure I mention the Sam Joseph team. Core Private Wealth, BD Consulting, Saturn Wireless, Little Daisy Bake Shop, Resilient Performance PT, the New Jersey Women's Flex League, Xenon, and Skull U. I mean, obviously, they couldn't have done it without uh, the help of all these sponsors. So, uh, Mick and Allison, I don't know if you want to come out and uh, present the winners, but you guys have done a fantastic job. So, I think um, Macy and Marcella, why don't you guys come on out? Yeah, so we'll start with the finalists. Newly married, Mar uh, newly married Macy Medeiros, congratulations. Marcella Redesno, congratulations, ladies. And of course, our winners, Gabriella Nicolescu and Roxy Anika. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Anyway, thanks, everybody. Stay tuned for the men's finals. All set. Yeah, why don't you guys take a picture?